So my text editor of choice in the last few months has been Doom Emacs, which is a distribution of Emacs that uses the evil key bindings, the Vim key bindings, and it's really fantastic. Doom Emacs comes with a lot of sensible defaults, a lot of plugins already installed for you, some turned on, some not turned on, but it's really easy to enable or disable the plugins you want to use or don't want to use with Doom Emacs. Doom Emacs is fantastic. I've done a lot of videos on it, but some of the Vim fanboys have been a little upset at me because I moved from Vim over to Doom Emacs. They're like, hey, you didn't have to go to Doom Emacs. Vim has distributions set up just like Doom Emacs. You could have checked out a distribution of Vim, such as Space Vim. And they're right. I should check out Space Vim. So today I'm going to do a quick first look and first impression of Space Vim. I don't know anything about this particular project other than it's a distribution of Vim. And again, it's going to have some plugins. You know, it's going to look really nice out of the box. You shouldn't have to do much with it. That's kind of the point of these distributions of Vim and the distributions of Emacs, such as Space Max and Doom Emacs, is that it's already set up for you. You shouldn't have to spend hours and hours or in some cases weeks or months uh, configuring the thing right it should be set up for you ready to go out of the box it's supposed to be really good especially for the new user right if you're new to vim or you're new to emacs getting one of these pre-built distributions is really a godsend because as a new user you're not going to have any idea how to write that config and set up everything you want to set up so something like space vim is great for the new user because it gives you some ideas of what the editor can be. So let me jump right into this thing. What I'm going to do is I'm going to go into their documentation. I will say first impression, their website and their documentation looks good. Uh, if I go to their quick start guide, I believe this is where I will find the installation instructions. Yeah, here's the install for Linux and Mac OS, and there is an installation guide for Windows. I'm going to, of course, use the Linux install guide and it looks like we install it simply with the curl command. So we pull down this bash script with curl and then of course run it. Now this can be dangerous. It's not something you typically want to do unless you really trust somebody. You don't want to just go curl some script onto your system and then uh, run it in your shell. But of course space vim is a rather large project. I, I trust them with this. So what I need to do is pull up a terminal and let me zoom in here so you guys can see this and I'm going to go ahead and paste that curl command and it should just be a one command install. Okay, and that was really nice. So we got a little bit of what it was doing. It installed space vim for vim. It installed space vim for neo vim because I'm actually a neo vim user. My vim is actually neo vim. It detected that. So I guess anytime I launch either Vim or NeoVim, I'm going to launch Space Vim. That's interesting. Uh, checked for some powerline fonts, mainly Deja Vu Sans Mono and Droid Sans Mono, and also Ubuntu Mono, all for powerline. So let's get started with this thing. So if it's installed, let me Vim space dot bash RC. Let's open my bash RC in uh, Space Vim here. And I will say the colors are not bad. They're using the Grovebox colors, not my favorite color scheme, but it is a popular color scheme. A lot of people like using it. Uh, I will say it's got the nice power line effects and everything. I was actually a little surprised I didn't get a like a proper home page or a greeter page like you get in something like Space Max or Doom Max. Maybe the problem was I specified a file them. So if I launch Vim with no other arguments, and then I get the home page, the greeter page, and you get uh, something written in some ASCII art here. I'm not exactly sure what that's supposed to be. It says, hi there. Okay, I see. And it's kind of <laughs> tough to read that particular ASCII art. And then we have our most recent documents we've opened in Vim. So that's kind of neat. We have a file viewer over here. This is, is this nerd tree? No, according to the... Uh, description down here at the bottom in the status line this is the vim filer plugin i've never actually used that plugin i've never actually heard of that plugin that's interesting so that would be interesting to know about by the way this plugin here that i guess the start page here is startify that's another vim plugin that i have never heard of so space vim already i can tell you is going to be interesting for me because it's going to introduce me to some vim plugins that i did not previously know about 
And in the Startify page, you see we have our recent files that we opened up in Vim. Off camera, I did open up the uh, Space Vim init file. I'm going to show you that here in a minute. I was a little worried when I ran that curl script. Uh, I wasn't sure what it was going to do to my VimRC and my NeoVim uh, init file as well. And you see config nvim underscore backup and init.vim. It creates a backup of your NeoVim config. So don't worry, it won't overwrite anything. I mean, it will overwrite everything, but it, it creates a backup. You're going to have a vimrc underscore backup, and I think you're going to have a nvim underscore back directory as well. So all of your stuff is backed up. So if I click zero on the keyboard, so you see I have E for empty buffer and then zero through 11. If I hit zero, I can get bash RC, I'm assuming. And that is, in fact, what happens here. And again, we've got the default colors, the grub box colors. And I would assume that if I hit space on the keyboard, similar to what you do in Doom Emacs, space. And then, all right, we get some hints as far as some of the other commands that we can do. So if I do space and then A for applications, you know, that would give me probably another menu or space and then B for buffers. Well, let's do that. So I've already hit space. Let's do B for buffers. And then it gives me the next list of commands, you know, for buffers, next buffer, previous buffer, I probably kill a buffer or delete a buffer. Yeah, I see that in the list as well. Right now, I only have the bash RC up, so I really can't do much with the buffers. But let me open up another uh, program here or another document to view here. So if I do, how about I just do a colon VS for vertical split and let me open up my ZSHRC file. <laughs> So we have two different buffers going on. Actually, I'd have a third buffer because Vim Filer, I would assume, would also be a buffer as well. So now let me do space B for buffer. And then if I do N for next buffer, right, see the bash RC goes to the next buffer, which is ZSHRC. So if I do space B N again, space B N again, okay, well... <laughs> There's only two buffers to work with, so there's not much to do here. But anyway, and we also have tabs at the top. I just noticed that by default, Space Vim does have tabs enabled. That's pretty cool. Although I'm not really sure I need the tabs if I'm going to use a split. I probably wouldn't have opened the split the way I did had I known that it was going to do this. But let me just go ahead and close that split. Actually, let me see if the standard Vim key bindings work. If I do uh, Control W C for close or window close, and that works as well. Let me actually open up the space Vim init file. So if I do colon to get back into command mode, I'm going to do colon E. We're going to edit a file. The init file for space Vim is in your home directory at dot uh, space vim dot d because it's a hidden directory so dot space vim dot d and then init dot toml and if I hit enter uh, this is the default init dot toml and there's not much to it you know I expected this thing to just be full of all kinds of crap because you know space vim you know it's got so much going on but there's really not much to it the color scheme by default is grub box there are some other color schemes if I get back into command mode and do color scheme and then just tab to see the available color schemes we have space vim which is just the default uh, theme which is growth box we have blue dark blue default delic desert elf forward or however the hell you pronounce that uh industry pablo peach buff these are all the standard default kind of vim color schemes so they're nothing special um but growth box it looks like it's the one they want to go with it's kind of popular i'm surprised i didn't see solarized in the list that's another really popular one had solarized dark been in the list i'd switch to that because i'd prefer that uh, i didn't see uh, other popular color schemes like dracula also wasn't in the list but it's very easy to change the the color scheme all you got to do is change the color scheme from grove box over to one of the available color schemes like delic or desert or desert or whatever uh, you have status line separators equals the arrows. I guess you could change that to other values as well. Other than that, you have some other stuff here. Layers, autocomplete. I guess this has something to do with the autocompletion feature within SpaceVim. Other than that, uh, if you want to figure out how to configure it, I guess we need to 
get into the documentation. So if I go to the documentation tab here and interface elements, color schemes, we just talked about that, fonts. Well, can you change the fonts? Now Vim is a terminal application. So yeah, you could add this line, GUI font equals source code pro is what their example is. Oh, that's interesting. So if I go here and let me just add a new line here and we have got that line commented out. If I write that, now that's a GUI font though. It's not a terminal font. I have Sauce Code Pro on the system though. You know what? Let me change this and let me see if it actually works. And I'll change it to uh, H15 here because I really want to know if it changes. It should be pretty obvious if the font all of a sudden becomes bigger. But if I do a colon WQ for right and quit and then get back into Vim, uh, yeah. It's still the same, right? Or did it change? It d does look like it changed, didn't it? Let me get the bash RC open. Or is that the, the same font as before? I think it is the same size. That's hard to tell, isn't it? Let me do a colon and then let me get back to this command here. Let's go ahead and edit this. Let me edit it to a really big font size. So I, I thought 15 would be obvious, but I guess it's not. Let's see if 18 is obvious. That's obviously, that, that didn't change. So I don't think that that made any difference here, which I, I didn't think it would, because why would it? For one thing, I misspelled the, the font too. <laughs> All right, now that I've spelled it correctly, let's try it. I still didn't change it. So I don't think this line actually does anything because GUI font, you know, again, that's for GVim, right? That's for the GUI version of Vim, GVim. Uh, Vim in a terminal, there's really no way to do anything with the fonts because Vim, by default, does not handle fonts, right? The fonts are entirely handled by the terminal emulator that you're running Vim in. So I wouldn't think that line would work unless, you know what, let me write and quit out of that. I didn't think about this. GVim. <laughs> GVim does work. Although I don't think Sauce Code Pro, the, the GUI font I set, I don't think it's actually working because that's not Sauce Code Pro. Uh, so let me get back into, uh, well, I actually, I guess I could just do this in GVim itself. Let me, where is the space vim init.toml? I'm just going to delete this line for now. I'll just use whatever default font they have here, right? And quit that. And I'm going to relaunch GVim. Yeah, <laughs> I like that. And that is actually more like Doom Emacs and Space Max in that, it is an actual GUI program. Yeah, and that's probably the way I would use Space Vim. Now that I know that you can use it as either Vim, Neo Vim, or GVim, I think it makes more sense to use it in the graphical form GVim because that really could give you access to things you normally would never have in terminal based Vim. For example, because GVim is a graphical application, you know, it could display images if it if you needed to display images, emojis. Um, you could also use plugins that do interesting graphical stuff. For example, many people love having a mini map, you know, on the side of the screen. You know, you guys have seen the mini map that editors like Sublime Text, for example, come with, or even, you know, some of the plain text editors in Linux, such as KDE's Kate, you know, or is it KWrite? One of them has as a mini map and you can't really do that in terminal based vim because it has to use the exact font that the terminal emulator is using the exact font face the exact font size and all it can do i guess to kind of mimic a mini map is display maybe like braille dots or something but it really doesn't look good and it really doesn't give you any idea of where you're at in this very lengthy document where gvim you could actually install a mini map plugin and it would actually look right. It would look like any other minimap plugin in a GUI text editor like Sublime or whatever. So yeah, this is interesting. One thing I don't like though, is I really don't like that the Vim filer is not showing me my hidden files and directories. I wonder if there's a way to toggle that on and off. I'm actually looking through the uh, SpaceMax documentation at the moment and I cannot find a way to do that. If I just do a search here, I am actually in Firefox. If I do a search for hidden, 
because I'm assuming that somewhere on this page it would mention hidden files or directories. It does not. It mentions the key binding, though, to toggle the Vim filer on and off F3, or you could use space FT. Okay. Well, that's interesting. At least I know the key binding to toggle it on and off. So for me, I would just use space FT. Space FT. All right, space FT. Okay, that works. So what otherwise has been fantastic documentation, I will say the Space Vim guys need to document how I get hidden files and directories in the Vim filer because it's it's almost useless if it won't show me the hidden files because <laughs> so many files that you edit on a regular basis, especially on Linux, are dot .files, you know, config files, you know. So, uh, yeah, we, we need to fix that. Um, maybe I should file a bug report with the Space Vim guys when I'm done with the video. So let me pull up a graphical file manager since uh, Vim Filer is not really working for me at the moment since I can't actually get into a hidden directory because I want to get into .spacevim and .spacevim.d. I'm not sure what's going on in these directories. I know .spacevim.d is the one that has our init.toml, our config file, but .spacevim without the D I think is the directory that has all the plugins. Yeah, it's down here. Is it bundle? Yeah. All right, so these are Vim plugins, and it has a lot of them. Ooh, <laughs> I wasn't aware it was this many plugins on here. If I just do a Control A to select everything, it looks like there's 61 items. When well, that includes the README, so it looks like 60 items. So 60 plugins. Let me just go through the list here, and I'll point out some of the ones that stand out to me that I recognize. Just right off the bat, I do notice that they have Nerd Tree here, so I could use Nerd Tree instead of Vim Filer, which may be what I would end up doing if I can't get Vim Filer to actually show me the dot files. Uh, also, I noticed in the list here Fortran.vim, so that's a Vim plugin. I'm assuming for people that are programming in Fortran, that is weird that they would include that. That that is very strange. Looks like we also have the Nerd Commenter plugin. That's very popular. Tabular is a very popular plugin. Vim Airline is the power line effect going on, I'm assuming, which makes sense. I've always found Vim Airline to be a little more reliable as far as it doesn't tend to be a hassle and break as much as the uh, standard power line package in Vim. I, I never could get power line to work consistently across all terminal emulators, but Vim Airline seems to take care of that. And of course, we have the Vim Airline themes because you can theme the power line to be uh, a different color scheme if you want it. Uh, Vim Startify against the start page. Vim Surround is a very popular plugin as well. I'm looking through their key bindings right now. I do notice one odd thing. I was looking for how to do splits here. I mean, obviously, you can always do colon split and colon v split. And I, I do know the commands to do it with the control key. You could do control w v for vertical split. <laughs> you know, but uh, I was going to see if they had any simpler key bindings or maybe key bindings that involve the space key here in space vim. But it looks like for splits, you do sv and sg. But sv is not a vertical split. SV is, I think, the horizontal split. SG is the vertical split. That makes no sense. But let's try it out. Uh, I'm interested. So if I do SV, yeah, that's, that's a horizontal split, <laughs> which is kind of cool. Now if I go back up here and I do SG, you know, that's really what I would consider a vertical split. And that's actually what really is a vertical split in a... Uh, Vim, because colon VS, of course, gets you that same effect, which is the vertical split. I know it's confusing. Some people call vertical splits, horizontal splits, and horizontal splits, vertical splits, because, I mean, is this really a vertical split? I would say it is, because it, it splits two columns, you know, vertical columns, but some people would say, well, you split it, <laughs> you know, so you got two things side by side in a horizontal pattern. It's kind of weird. You know, so, you know, in Emacs, this is really... A horizontal split, but in Vim it's really a vertical split. It's confusing, but I wish they would change that key binding because I think SV makes more sense for the vertical split and instead of SG. Now in Space Max and Doom Max, you can navigate splits using key bindings that use the space key, space W for space window, space W, and then HJKL, the navigation keys, the standard Vim navigation keys. So if I do space W, L, I move to the split, 
over on the right. If I do space WJ for down, I move to the split down here. If I do space WK to move up, I move back up into that split. Well, that's kind of cool. I wonder if I can close a uh, uh, split with space WC. Now, space WC is not bound, but I could always just use one of the standard VM key bindings, which is control WC to close. Okay, that works. Control WC again to close that split. Now, one very important thing I want to take a look at because, you know, one of the really neat things that I love about Doom Emacs is how easy it is to add and remove Emacs plugins, Emacs extensions. And I want to see if I can get that same kind of ease of use in something like SpaceVim. How easy is it to install your own custom plugins? Because by default, the init.toml for SpaceVim. I don't see like any list of plugins or anything. You know, how do I go about adding plugins? Let me review the documentation here. And there is a plugin section. It talks about updating, you know, the default plugins that come with it. But they do have this one little section here, add custom plugins. If you want to add plugins from GitHub, just add the repo name to the custom plugins section. So we need to create a custom plugin section, I'm assuming, to our init.toml. Let's see if that actually works. I'm kind of curious about this myself. So I just added their example plugin, which is the colorizer plugin. I guess that's not something that ships by default with SpaceVim. So let me do a colon WQ for write and quit. Now let me relaunch GVim if I can type correctly. And I don't know if it actually installed that colorizer plugin or not. I guess I need to find something that has some colors. You know, I know my uh, X resources file has some hex colors in it. So let's do our X resources file. Let me get down here to where the hex colors are. These are all commented outlines. Here's some hex colors, but they are not highlighted in any way. Let me get back into the documentation here. Update plugins, colon, capital S, P, update. Okay, let's try that. So let me get back over here so you guys can see this. S, P, update and colorizer is in the list here and it says updating done so i guess it did install this uh this plugin so i don't know why it didn't colorize my x resources colors there but I, maybe it just doesn't like these kinds of hex value colors uh, maybe it just does it for rgb value colors or something like that I, i'm not sure what's going on uh, but it, it installed the plugin. It just doesn't seem to be working correctly. But that's how you install the plugins, though. If I go back here to the init toml, you just create this new section, custom underscore plugins, and then you list your plugins under there where repo equals the repo from GitHub. And I think that's where I'm going to quit with this very quick cursory look at SpaceVim. This was a first look, first impression kind of video because I thought this would be really neat coming at it from a brand new user. Because that's kind of what Space Vim is supposed to be for. It's supposed to be for the new Vim user. They actually, on their website, say it's for the elementary, quote, elementary Vim user. So somebody that really doesn't know anything about Vim. Because if you don't know anything about Vim, how are you going to know how to turn Vim into a IDE? You're not going to know all the plugins you need. You know, you're not going to know about all the completion plugins and the language syntax plugins and things like the colorizer plugins and nerd tree and Vim filer and things like that. You're going to have to do serious research and it can be confusing to get into that stuff if you don't know what you're doing. You know, Space Vim just takes care of all that stuff. And it did kind of overwrite you know, my, my configs, my VimRC and my NeoVimRC. I mean, it backed them up. I still have them. But I'm not sure if I'm going to restore my standard NeoVim config. I may actually just leave SpaceVim on the system. I'm seriously thinking about just using this as Vim for a while. Of course, I'm going to spend most of my time in Doom Emacs because Doom Emacs is my preferred text editor. But anytime I launch Vim... I think what I'm going to do is just launch SpaceVim. It's already aliased, I think, any, uh, anyway. Anytime you, I launch Vim right now, it actually launches SpaceVim. So I, I think that's just what I'm going to do. I'm just going to keep using this as Vim every time I open up Vim because I just think it's a neat project. And I'm really <laughs> glad that I checked this out. A lot of you guys have been asking about this. A lot of you Vim users especially. Hey, check out SpaceVim. I actually am very impressed with this project. 
It, it has a great website. The documentation is pretty fantastic. And if you go check out their GitHub, a lot of people are actually working on this. They claim it's a community-driven Vim distribution, and it really is. It looks like they have dozens of active people working on the project. So uh, definitely check it out if you are a Vim user or if you're thinking about getting into Vim, maybe give Space Vim a try. Now, before I go, I need to thank a few special people. I need to thank the producers of the show, Michael, Gabe, Corbinian, Mitchell, Devin, Fran, Arch 5530, Comedy Channel, Chuck, Claudio, Donnie, Dylan, George, Greg, Kel of Devils, Lewis, Paul, Scott, and Willie. They are the producers of the show. They are my highest tiered patrons over on Patreon. I also need to thank each and every one of these ladies and gentlemen. All these names you're seeing on the screen right now. Each and every one of these fine ladies and gentlemen help support my work over on Patreon because this channel is supported by you guys, the community. If you'd like to support my work, look for DistroTube over on Patreon. All right, guys. Peace. Now, how do I exit out of Vim? <laughs>